hello everybody uh, thank you for joining us today and welcome for today's webinar uh, it's uh, Wednesday and like every Wednesday uh, we have another bunch of examples for you uh, today uh, we will show you again uh, four examples but first of all if you have any question just uh, put it into the message window which you can see on the screen and uh, we will answer it uh, immediately after the live session. Uh, my name is uh, Marek Michna. I am consultant for Idea Statica, and I have here Jana and Adam. They are product engineers, and they will show you practical part of today's uh, webinar. We prepared four examples. First one is. Uh, general 3D frame connection. As you can see, uh, we will show it from scratch that you can see how to model it uh, and uh, how to calculate it. Second example is uh, also 3D type of connection. It's bracing connection using uh, uh, bolted gusset plate. And uh, last two examples are related uh, to beam links. Today we will show you a connection with AirFem from Lubal. And uh, last example is from CAT software from Revit. Again, you will see uh, how to design connection from this software. So that's all for, for the start. Uh, again, uh, we will uh, make a record and we will send it in uh, till the end of this week and you also can try you can ask for trial version uh, after the webinar you will see on the screen uh, small uh, uh, you will see small uh, form just apply yes no okay so now let me uh, give a presenter to uh, adam i suppose Yes, hello everyone. Uh, this is Adam. Uh, welcome to one of the last Connection Wednesdays together. And um, we're going to go through together of designing such a, a star uh, shaped connection. And um, we actually will be going through it quite um, quite fast. I'm going to skip some things, just not to spend so much time on that and uh, not to bore you uh, till death. <laughs> so <laughs> we'll start. Uh, we'll skip uh, inputting the geometry a bit. I have prepared the geometry already. It's just. Um, five or six beams and um, it just goes quickly through it and so there are two main beams k1 and k2 and to them are four diagonals d1 to d4 uh, connected those diagonals have uh, a model type of only axial and shear forces loading so there's no bending here because they are um, a part of, of bracing, so it's only tension. So this is the geometry setup, and there's, I think, nothing else interesting. There's just standard, uh, standard library um, cross sections and so on, and uh, just put together in this shape. So we move on to load effects. And this is empty here because it's a, a joint from scratch that we're creating here. And so we're gonna um, input the forces. And I'm gonna do that from an Excel sheet, which I've prepared here. I've prepared uh, only uh, tension and compression forces. But uh, let me show you one thing here. I have forces uh, in seven rows, and if I go to idea, they are one, two, four, five, six rows. 
So it doesn't fit, and this is because the author uh, of this joint, which is actually a customer uh, using Idea Statica for his work, and he sent us this uh, project that we can show uh, to you. And um, he wanted to load the, the bearing member as well. And for that, as we've shown you in some last Connection Wednesdays, you have to check or turn on this uh, check equilibrium in advanced mode. If I click on that, um, another row appears uh, that allows us to load the, the bearing member as well. So now we have seven rows and we are prepared to uh, copy and paste the forces. Um, I click here to import and paste the forces into IDEA project. So it's there in the table. We can check uh, um, check it in the 3D window. And it's uh, set all there. Okay. So we move on to design. And uh, here I'm going to show you just some of the operations. So let's get started uh, with uh, the stiffening plate uh, operation, which we're going to use for creating the main plate uh, in the center of the joint. So just simply modify. Um, this um, operation by inputting uh, geometrical data like this. So we have now the plate there and I'm just going to move it a little bit and rotate it. So now it's looking fine. Um, let's just edit the shape a bit in the editor of the operation here and I want to uh, cut those uh, corners here by a bevel operation, for example, and I'll have a, such dimensions, and this will be for the corner number four, and I will just do the same, so I'll copy uh, the operation also for corner number one, so like that, all right. So the main plane is done and we're going to connect all those members, all those beams to that central plate. So first we'll start with the K2 member, this one. And for that we will use a operation cutoff plate, this one. So in here, we're going to switch from cut to notch because the plate goes through uh, the member, through its walls. So we're going to use notch. And um, what we'll be modifying is the member K2. And we'll start with this web, which is, as you can see here, in the left bottom corner of the 3D screen. If I point on the on the plate, it's K2 Web 1. All right, and we're connecting to SP1, so this is correct, but still uh, can't see any weld, so we're going to modify that. So I'll just put some thickness here, and I want to have it a, a double fillet weld, and now it appeared here because before it was only inside. If I turn off the display of loads and uh, bearing, it's like this. And you can see, you can play with that. If I switch like this, like this, or like this. So it's now outside and inside the, and the, the member. All right, so this is how we um, connect it. I can show you a transparent view how it's going through, really, um, the member or the wall of the member. So we just continue by simply copying to the other web as well, which is web number three. And it's there. So 
the same way uh, we would connect those two diagonals d2 and d1 so i'm going to skip that now and i'll show you how to connect diagonal d3 and for that we're going to use a connecting plate operation this one and just specify um, all the options and numbers here so we're connecting d3 and uh, we're connecting to existing plate the sp1 all right so i'll just move the connection to the right position set its thickness and um, i'll change the type which is now a cup plate to a notched plate rectangle all right this is what i like better and just modify dimensions like that um change the weld and change the weld assembly like this and now i set the set the bolts the bolt grid like that and that's it that's the operation this is done we connected d2 and we just do the same with d4 just copy the operation and just modify i'll just leave it like this so that's fine and um, the last thing is to connect the the main beam k1 to that to that center plate and for that we'll do it by two operation first we will cut a opening in the webs of the k1 beam um, the opening for the plate actually and then we will weld it together so for the opening we use this uh, operation opening notch so i will set it to member k1 to web one i want to have a rectangular uh, opening and um, the size would be 550 to 15 and in this position so if i switch to transparent view you can see the opening there already so i just copy this to the web 3 to the um, upper web of the beam so it's there as well and now we just weld it together by using the weld operation and um, this will use like this a plate of member because it's a member k1 and it's plate web1 uh, turn to solid view and we're connecting to sp1 and plate and let's say six millimeters thick weld and both um, on both sides so double fillet weld and there's no weld whoops why is that because i forgot to change the edge index here this is very important thing uh, when um, setting a, a weld like this the weld operation this edge index is um, a number of uh, of an edge on the part of the member or on the plate that we are welding and if i turn it, switch to transparent view i'm going to see more of those numbers they are in those gray um, rectangles here this is edge number one and if i zoom here you can see the edge number four seven five to those are the edges that goes along the beam along the web along the opening so we're going now to weld number seven the weld is there let's see okay right in the position and it's inside as well because we used 
double fill it out. We can just turn it on here, here, and like just as we wish. All right, and now I just copy it to the edge index number five, and it's there as well. So this is how it works. And um, now just to save time, I'm not going to finish this by completing all the operation. I'm just going to jump to um, another file where it's already done. So you see all the notches and so on, etc. So let's just calculate this and let's see what's going to happen. Um, just uh, while it's uh, calculating, let's see. This is a, I would say, a treasury in our resource center that I'm going to show you. This is ideastatica.com, our web page. And if you click resources and ideastatica steel, and you go here to design by idea connection, you can see the customer project section here. And this is a, a place where we put um, the most interesting projects that were sent to us by our customers, users, users of IDEA. So we made a list of them here with the pictures and you can download them here. So you can download actually the project, take a look at it in IDEA, modify it, get inspired of it or whatever. Just try it on your own. So this is, I think, pretty cool. So you can check it yourself. Okay, let's get back. This is uh, done here, calculation. So we can see uh, it was checked, it's okay. Everything is green or under 100%. So it passed the checks, that's fine. So we can just um, go through um, the standard um, result displays that we have here and that you have seen already many times. So I think there's no need to show them again. All right, just we can turn on this or, or we can just um, click on, the, on some bolt to see here on the tab um, the numbers according to the code checks and also the uh, equations like that. All right, I think this made it. And um, I'm going to give presenter to Jana. It's going to uh, show I'm you. sorry, Adam, yeah. sorry for a small interruption. I just looked into the questions and uh, some of our users uh, saw that uh, uh, you did a small uh, mistake, maybe, <laughs> in that you put uh, uh, weld inside the tube. Uh huh. All right. Uh, but yeah, this is uh, actually very easy. How uh, very easy to change? Yes. Let's get maybe. back to the example. I was uh, for for example like this. Well, yes, of course. Um, it's just as you wish. If you if it's possible to do it there, uh, which actually is not <laughs> from my point of view, as yeah. I as I'm looking now at it, I would just simply turn it off like this. Oh, okay. The, the other way around, like this. Okay. Just, okay. Just leave it outside like this. It was I think even here. I just wanted to show you that there's the option that you can you know, have it wherever you like. Okay. Okay. Fine. So we can see that people are not sleeping. So <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's fine. Thank you for the question. <laughs> okay. So let's continue. Okay. So, okay, so Anna. I will show you now the second example. Uh, this will be uh, such a connection 
again from scratch from the library from our users so maybe if you have some interesting connection that you would like to share with other people in uh, in the future in some future parts of connection Wednesdays you can send it to us and we can present how to design and calculate such such connection so this case it's like a X shape uh, joint of some bracings so uh, I will start with the new project again I can choose between US code Euro code and now in the closest future we will we will release also the Canadian code but this project will be in Euro code I will choose the 2d frame and I will I will uh, so the closest topology is probably the last one, but uh, as usual, you can change it e quite easily in the geometry. So first of all, in geometry, I will choose the cross section. I want to have the square hollow section from the library, SHS 120, uh, 120 and 5 millimeters which is this one and I want to have it for all my members so I will just easily change it from already uploaded uh, cross sections uh, now the first uh, the main beam B I will just make it a little bit longer so that uh, the connection will be easily visible and the same uh, with those other connected members and the last thing or uh, no, sorry not last but another thing which I want to change is the modal type because as usual uh, I will make the connection with two bolts only which is quite uh, unstiff from the rotational point of view so it's it behaves like a hinge therefore I will change the co uh, the model type to the last one uh, which transfers only uh, forces and no bending moments and now the last thing I will adjust I will adjust the angle the better angle of uh, B1 and also B2 member so that I have this X shape okay now in the load effects I will apply some uh, tensile force let's say 60 kilonewtons okay like this and now I can proceed to design section so again uh, I want to make the connection with a plate going through member B uh, and this plate I will connect B1 and B2 so I would say whenever you want to do something uh, which is not listed in the main library just go to the stiffening plate because this operation is the most general one you can you can adjust all the sizes and all the positions and all the rotations for the stiffening plate so uh, when something is not possible with I don't know with connecting plate or gusset plate uh, I use the operation stiffening plate which is the most general and then you can add general welds or general bolts as you wish so I switch the view to transparent uh, so that we can see where the stiffening plate is located and now I will start to adjust, adjust the shape I want to have it 200, 280 and 80 millimeters like this. The origin will be in the joint in the middle and I will rotate the plate by 60 degrees like this. Okay, so you can see it's going just uh, parallel to B1 and B2 and just in the middle. So now I will go to design the connection of B1 to the stiffening plate. I want to uh, connect it with connecting plate. I can choose the bolt uh, grade and bolt size. Okay, like this. And I want to connect member B1, not to new plate, but to existing plate SP1, like this. I will switch back to the uh, 
solid view so that we can see it better. I will shift the connection a little bit and I want to change the type from cap plate to notched member. Okay, like this. I will make uh, uh, I will make the connecting plate a little bit uh, shorter. Okay, I will leave the connection type to bolted or the other option is the welded connection and I will change the thickness or the side uh, or the size of the weld. Now it's okay one side so it's only uh, from outside the weld so it's correct and I will adjust I will adjust the spacing of bolts. Okay like this and last thing I will shift it a little bit. Okay, so you can see we have this connecting plate from one side. Well, the same operation will be for the B2 member, therefore I will just copy this operation CPL1 and easily change B1 to B2 and we are done. So now we have to handle uh, with the connection of the stiffening plate to the, to the beam B. So first of all, we have to define the opening in the uh, in the member B. It's this operation, and we have to define the the part of the member. So if you want to know what part it is, just go with your pointer to the part. It gets yellow, and here down at the bottom, you can see that it's member B and it's web number four. So I will change. Uh, web number four of the member B. The shape will be rectangular and now the size I have 190 and 10 millimeters and I have to I have to change the position so that it goes just uh, at the place where the stiffening play is located like this. Okay, and now I will add a general weld. So I add another operation, this one, operation weld, and I always, uh, we are welding edge to plate. So the edge is of um, member B, uh, oh, sorry, the plate of member, plate of member B, and it's uh, the web number four, as we know already, and to the plate SP1. And now if we want to know the edge index, just switch to transparent mode. As, and as Adam already showed, uh, you can see the edge index here. So I will start with edge number five. You can see the yellow line, which uh, means that the model uh, edit uh, no, uh, sorry, the weld. And in the solid view, you can easily guess what what side the weld is. So it's this one. I will make it a little bit uh, smaller and now I will just uh, add the weld on the other side. So I will copy the operation and the edge index number seven. So you can see it's down here. Okay and, and as you can guess we will just copy all these three operations uh, for the B2 member. So I will copy the opening, I will change uh, the web 4 to web 2 and I guess I have to change the sign of the position. Okay, it's here. I can change the mode. Okay, it's correct. I will uh, copy the weld 1 Again, I will just change the web number and the same for weld two, copy and change the web four to web two. Okay, just check it from the from the solid view and I think it looks good. So we are done and we will start the calculation. And after after the the model is calculated, we will see 
as usual some traffic lights so again the green parts are somewhere between 60 to 95 percent of the utilization gray are below 60 percent and if you can see something uh, red it means it's over the limit orange ones are between 95 to 100 percent okay so and for the more uh, more detailed uh, results just go to check uh, check item and you can display the strain you can display also the equivalent stress for not only uh, for general but uh, also for for the for each member now i have somehow lost the table okay i have some accidentally turn it turn it off mm -hmm. okay so uh, i'm not sure where where the table uh, is now <laughs> okay i'm sorry i will find it out this never happened to me before so uh, I don't want to look for it now, but uh, actually, all the all the results will be also uh, in the in the in the report. So we'll show the report afterwards. Okay. So for the third example, I'm passing the presenter back to Adam, who will show some BIM link. All right, um, so um, let's see, I'm, I'm going to show you a, um, um, a BIMLing with the RFEM uh, software and just, um, I'm sorry, we're having a, a small technical issues here, <laughs> so. Um, I'm just going to start um, the software now. So, this is RFEM and uh, the link is um, already integrated there uh, to Idea Statica. And it, it integrates as to other softwares during installation of Idea. And here in RFEM, uh, it works like this, that you click on add-on modules. And here, IDEA adds external modules. And you can just click to IDEA connection. There's also IDEA beam for uh, concrete structures uh, calculated in RFEM. So uh, we want to export um, a connection from um, such a, a steel frame hall. This is a very standard design of a steel hall. So we're just going to select one joint, uh, one connection, and load it into Idea Statica and check it there. So just click Idea Connection uh, module. Uh, the software asks us to select a node, so I'll take this one. This is probably the most complex here in this uh, project, so no, no, node number 23. Click OK, then uh, we have to select the beams connected to the node, so like this, and that's it. Now the uh, wizard opens, we just um, save the project somewhere, uh, click next and go through it. Next is uh, um, a window for setting the, the bearing members, which is correctly to the column. And there's only one thing I would like to do here and to show you that we have um, two beams um, connected to the node. And I would like to have it as one continuous beam. So it's this number 43 and 44. So it's listed here. If I just click on that, 43 or 44, uh, it just uh, immediately um, 
let us um, merge it together. So I will click OK because I want to merge it. This is a question if you would like to merge it. So yes. So it changed here to continues and one beam and merged at the second beam. So this is now going to be merged. <clears throat> so next, we can just take a look at the load groups and I'll just leave it all by default, which is actually the best way. There's nothing to change usually. It just loads all the combinations, all the load effects into Idea Statica, as you will see in, in a second. So, uh, Here's the geometry um, display. So we see the column and um, the main beam, and there's one diagonal, which is uh, um, wind bracing. So this will be um, axial loading only or no moments. Um, so I'm going to change it here in the geometry section. I'll just select 77 member, which is the diagonal and change the model type to axial and shear forces loading like this. And I'll probably make it a bit longer. So there would be enough space for the connecting um, plate or whatever we're going to create. So like that, um, if you go to load effects, um, this is just, um, there's the list of all the combinations and so on. So as I told you, it's all loaded here and we can check it in the 3D window as well. So it looks looking like this. So there's nothing to, to change. And we move on to design. And since it's a uh, calculating software, there are no operations, no uh, connections created, and we have to edit there. Um, as we would like to have it. So um, I'm not going to do it manually or step by step. What I'm going to show you a template or refresh uh, uh, showing the template that we did actually in some of the last uh, um, Connection Wednesday sessions. But I'm going to show you there are two options of actually um, um, using template. There's apply template and there is open template. And the difference is that apply template loads a template from the library, which is inside your Idea Statica installed on your computer. So if I click on that, it shows me uh, the possible uh, sets of operations that I can use for such geometry. And I have prepared one here and you can prepare many many types or something and just save it in the library and use it uh, later on other projects and just modify it then or whatever so this works like this so i just select it and apply and just yeah confirm the bolt assembly and it's there I just uh, used an end plate operation, connect to the column and the beam, and a shifted end plate for those two beams and connecting plate for the diagonal. All right, um, so this is one option and I'm going to delete this now and show you the other one how to apply or use a template, which is open template. And now this works uh, the other way, and it works that it opens a, a window and asks you to find a file with the template. So 
This is the other way that you can just export a file with the template and then load it with this command. So that's what I'm going to do. A advantage of this is that you can obviously send a file whenever to whoever and he can, the, the other person can just open it at um, his computer. A little disadvantage of this is that uh, there is no picture of the <laughs> of the joint of or, or the set of the operations that that is shown in the inside idea library of templates. So this is just the same uh, as before, just loaded from the file. All right, so this is done, and uh, now we just check it. And uh, this is probably going to calculate some time. So I will open another file, which I have uh, this already um, calculated. And I can also show you um, when it's opening in our resource center. Again, if we move to tutorials section, and we go to BIM. There's the list of all the softwares that we are connected to, or we have the links to. And there's also, of course, a tutorial for RFEM um, or the other, other global software, which is RSTEP. So here you can go step by step through RFEM link and try it on your own. Um, again, all described here, all the process and so on. There's a, a video how to do that. And uh, there are of course source files provided. There's example of RFEM project and of course Idea Statica project already done. All right, um, so um, this is uh, the calculation done. So this is just a, a standard procedure how to check um, calculated joins. So I think there's nothing more, nothing else to say about it. Just maybe to refresh, um, we have the reports here. One line, one page, very brief versions and then detailed with all all the parts listed, all the items of the connection, pictures, checks, all the numbers and so on that you can modify as you wish to your own shape and print it to the paper or PDF or just save it as an open um, editable uh, document, for example, in Word. So that's it. Um, I'm giving presenter to Jana, who's going to show you another link from another software. Okay, thank you. And in the last example, uh, I will show you the second BIM link. Uh, this time it will be the export from Revit by Autodesk. And it's uh, really easy. So you just choose uh, the joint that you want to export. Uh, just select the joint and all the connecting members. And if you run mm, before uh, our uh, BIM link in Idea Statica, I will maybe show it. Uh, if you open Idea Statica and go to BIM, activate your BIM links and you can install the plugin here for all different softwares. So uh, this wizard will add a new, uh, new add-in to the ribbon. So now I can just press it and I'm uh, I'm, I'm in the wizard, in the exporting wizard. So I can choose between code and I will see the model of the connection. I can choose the bearing member, etc. Uh, I will just uh, jump. Okay. 
so we'll see what happened. <laughs> I hope I just didn't lose the BIM link. Okay, maybe I will go through it. Okay, come on, this is not a good good session. I have tried this uh, I've tried this before. Okay, so maybe I just uh, somehow broke the connection between Idea Statica. Never mind. I will just uh, I will just delete. I have one backup file, so I will just delete it at the operations and I will show it here. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't know what happened in the BIM link. I probably uh, when I tried to show you show you the installation somewhere, something went wrong. So never mind. The wizard should import the geometry uh, of the connection like this, and also the load effects. So you will see I have load and load effects. So uh, I think I did not edit anything in this uh, geometry section and also in the load effects and the design uh, design is uh, quite easy i have just two members so i will add two operations the first uh, first will be the end plate from the uh, beam 630 so i will add an end plate okay it's already here uh, the member two, I will leave it not specified. Uh, this offer, this option is here to uh, make one operation for two end plates. For example, if you have a symmetrical beam on the uh, connected to the other flange, you can add the same end plate or the identical end plate on the other side in one operation. But in this case, we don't have such uh, topology, so I will leave it not specified. I will leave the thickness and I will just make it a little bit uh, taller. Okay, like this. Uh, the dimensions are symmetrical, so if you don't, if you want a non-symmetrical end plate, you will just switch this option, and you can then adjust all the all the dimensions but i will leave it symmetrical uh, okay the bolt type it's uh, i want to use the m16 uh, of 8.8 uh, class and i will just add uh, another row of uh, bolts okay and the, uh, the distance from edge is okay and I will leave the settings of welds like it is. Okay. And for the other, uh, for the connection of the other uh, beam, I will use the operation cleat, which is this one. So I want to connect the member 700 to uh, with its web to the member uh, to the member. Uh, I think it's the beam, it's member 618, like this. And I will just uh, choose the profile of the cleat from the library. I can either uh, choose something from the predefined sections or I can define my own section. In this case, I want to use the section uh, L8060 and seven, so I will find it in the library, this one. Okay, and you can see it's already here. If I want the longer part to be on the web of the horizontal beam, I will just check the, um, conver uh, to convert the, the cleat and it's like, it's like this. Okay, and I want to have the cleat on both sides, so I will, just change the location and now you can see it's also on the other side of the web. Uh, I will adjust the cleat length so that it's a little bit uh, shorter and I will leave the gap like it is. 
I will change the grade or sorry the grade the same but the size of the of the bolts uh, I will add another uh, another row of uh, bolts okay I want to have it like this and uh, there's also an option that I want different bolts uh, for the columns. So if I uncheck the last box, you can see that I can define different bolts for uh, for the other side of the cleat. But in my case, I will leave it uh, symmetrical. And to show you something uh, new or maybe uh, the thing which was not presented uh, so far, I will use the uh, preloaded bolts. So if I want preloaded bolts, I uh, need to have the bolts of grade 8.8 .8 or higher and I need to change the shear for transfer to friction and now the bolts are checked for the slippage. So now, if I'm satisfied with the design, I will just start the calculation. We will see if it goes uh, through and what will be the check of the code. So, okay, now I can see something. Some parts are green and some parts are gray. So the gray parts, gray bolts could be replaced by some smaller ones or maybe uh, lower number of bolts and one bolt is orange so just we will check the results now okay <laughs> now if I, I have the table here so uh, if you use the preloaded bolts uh, you have um, another check here and it's the uh, the limit state of the bolt slippage. So uh, for the preloaded bolts we check the slippage if it's uh, it, if it doesn't fulfill the uh, the limit state then you have to go back to design and change the shear for transfer to bearing and tangent shear interaction and run the analysis again and maybe if those bolts are not preloaded they can still handle with the load but they will not be uh, considered as preloaded so again you have all the results and tables uh, all the all the um, formulas from code which are checked for each bolt for each weld you can display the stress and also I can just show the deformed shape and I can display the bolt forces so you can see that if I click on the arrow I am immediately in the table on the bolt which I just uh, selected so I can check everything here. Okay, so I guess that's all. I'm sorry for the for the error of the Revit just five minutes ago. It worked, but I guess it's just a bad luck. So sorry for that. And uh, I will pass the presenter back to Marek and we can uh, answer some yes. questions. Thank you, Jana, and also thank you, Adam, for your presentations. Uh, maybe your computer is tired, so <laughs> it doesn't work. <laughs> and uh, now uh, let's have a look on your questions. Uh, but before, let me invite you for the next week uh, webinar. Uh, in the same time, uh, on Wednesday, we will show uh, another examples and uh, our colleagues from Idea Statica UK uh, will uh, will show you and also Jana. So you can already uh, or you can already uh, assign for the webinar on just uh, click on uh, ideastatica.com and uh, webinar page and you can register. So now let's have a look on your questions. Uh, the first uh, question is uh, related to the BIM link uh, to Revit. Uh, 
Vimlink doesn't work in my installation of uh, Idea Statica. Why? Uh, <laughs> so this is quite to the point. <laughs> so <laughs> uh, first of all, it is uh, always good to check uh, if uh, your um, installation of Idea Statica is, is compatible with uh, with the software from which you want to uh, import. So again, if you go to the web page, just have a look on BIM tab and you see uh, all softwares uh, which are supported and also uh, the version which is supported for the link. So this is uh, important uh, to check uh, before you go to the BIM link. And also it can be related uh, to your license. Uh, Again, if you check on uh, our page, we provide uh, two uh, two packages. Uh, one is full, which has uh, all features, including cat links to the Tecla, Advanced Steel, and Revit. So, uh, if you don't have this full version, it will doesn't work. So, this is also needed to check if your license is working. So. This is the to the first question and uh, second one uh, is related to the export because uh, we are able to import from CAD software but uh, is there option to export idea co connection model into any CAD software? Jana, maybe you can answer this. Okay, I will take the presenter back. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, so uh, you are asking about the export. Okay, so uh, I will show it on the first example. Finally, I found out how to how to display all the tables. And so, if you want to export just uh, one plate or one um, yeah one plate, uh, easy way is to go to the design, open open the editor. Uh, you have the plate in the editor, you already know, and if you uh, right-click, you have the option to e export to DXF. And if you want to export all the all the plates, uh, it's good to go to the, uh, sorry, either, either report, oh no, bill of materials, sorry, uh, you have to at drawings and now in the upper upper part if you refresh yeah now it's uh, open the option to export to dxf like this and uh, you will get the export of all uh, these plates to some um, cat software okay okay thank you and uh, another mm -hmm. question uh, maybe I can pick one of the list. There's a yeah. So um, Mircha is asking about the export of the report to award uh, document. Okay. Maybe show that. Okay. Um, I will give you a present. Okay. So, so you will show it. Yes, I can show that. Yeah. So, uh, as I told you, you can print to paper PDF or save it as a editable document. So, this is not going to save uh, directly into a doc document, which is a, a file format of, of uh, Microsoft Word or like that, but um, it allows you to save as a, uh, a um, as a browser document and and then you can just copy to Word. So I'll show you that. Just save it somewhere and um, just save it to my desktop. And uh, um, just excuse me, there's, I don't have the file here, I just did it. I didn't export it. Once again, uh, 
Uh, well, now this is strange here. It's oh, sorry. I had to refresh the, <laughs> the desktop. So um, I just open uh, the file in the browser, and uh, it's all there. And just I just copy it. Just uh, um, you know, select all by Control and A, or just select it like this by the mouse. And uh, I'll just open Microsoft Word and uh, paste it here. So just have it there. And you have the pictures. If I go to the desktop again, you have the pictures here. So yeah, I can just, again, copy it and just, um, you know, make uh, some... Maybe. Yeah. Assembly as you wish. You can also use the other format uh, if you uh, go back to Idea Statica. Uh, oh, maybe I can show it. I just tried yeah. it. Okay. Uh, in the report. Uh, in the report, if you uh, if you save it in the in the MHT uh, file format, then you can open it in the Word directly, which I have done just now. I have, uh, sorry, it's in Czech, but uh, never mind. It's uh, here, this MHT format, and if I open it, then I have the report directly in Word. So it's another, another <laughs> way, maybe a little bit shorter. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'm, I'm learning on the way as well. Yeah, I will learn how to display disappear tables and... <laughs> All right. <laughs> so I think we go to the end of this funny... Okay, yeah, day. this is what I wanted to say, that we reached uh, 60 minutes. Of, this is uh, the end. <laughs> so... Uh, uh, there are several questions which uh, we will not answer now, but uh, we will answer it uh, by emails. So thank you for your time, uh, and uh, we are we are looking forward uh, for the next webinar. So thank you and uh, goodbye. Goodbye. Have a nice day. Bye bye.